I want to start measuring polypores. So if we actually came every year, measured the polypore, we would be able to like measure its annual growth. And you get like three years of data, and you'd really actually be able to contribute a lot of new information to mycology, because people just don't do these things. <laughs> I almost caught it. <laughs> Let's see if any of this is still good. Yeah, so the inside stays pretty good, even though you have that surface layer of mold. This is the birch polypore, or uh, Phomatopsis betulinus, or betulina, <laughs> one of the two. And they used to use this actually as a band-aid. They would cut strips out of it and uh, it coagulates your blood. So they would actually cut strips when it's fresh, and, you know, apply it right on a wound. You can also eat it and make tea out of it. It has betulinic acid, the same awesome uh, anti-cancer compound that chaga has. And that can actually induce apoptosis in uh, cancer cells in certain malperforming cells. Just an example of a birch compound that gets concentrated in some of these fungi that could have some really remarkable applications in medicine. Wow. This is a beautiful piece of chaga. And this is a perfect example of how the chaga will actually infiltrate the entire vertical length of the host tree that it grows on. In this case, we're looking at a yellow birch tree, a really big yellow birch tree. But we see on the left-hand side, about six feet up, there's another kind of splotch of chaga growing out of there. And then even higher on the right-hand side, it looks like there's some more chaga. When chaga dies at the end of its life cycle, it actually will rip a crack through the entire vertical length of the birch tree. Then it will kind of split open. Somehow the fungus actually does this. And then all of the spores and these porous holes will kind of expose themselves. And then it can actually reproduce and produce spores uh, three different times after it kills the birch tree, even after the birch tree falls. Even the dead chaga lying on the ground will spore two or three times. So I'm gonna demonstrate a sustainable harvest uh, with a beauty such as this one. We know that if we keep this chaga vital, then it's going to continue to produce a yield. We may actually be able to harvest chaga on this tree in a way that catalyzes regrowth and allows for uh, a longer duration of life for the birch tree and an overall larger output of chaga over time. So, the key to doing that is leaving about 50% behind, not cutting into the tree. So that's what I'll demonstrate for you right now. So once again, you're gonna to wanna to really carefully plan where you're going to hit it, how it might break. So like I said, you want to leave about 50% behind. Uh, that's a clean cut. We might take a little chip off of this one and then we'll be good to go. can make a pretty nice loon call out of this. I think it's like... Kinda, kinda like a loon. I stopped here just because it's some super wet moss and if you're in a survival situation, um, you're always gonna be able to find this kind of stuff, at least here in the Adirondacks, and you can just squeeze the moisture out of it. 
it's good. It's not going to be contaminated like it would be if you were drinking from lake water or river water because you'd have things like beaver fever, or giardia, and all these other parasites. But if you just take some of this moss, If you need it, you need it. It was refreshing. Oh, dude, we gotta get some pictures by this. Wow. <laughs> wow. Dear Mr. Chaga man, Chaga spirit, I just uh, want to thank you for being so plentiful here in my home region. I believe that your vitality here is permanent. Uh, God bless you. This is the active mycelium growth. We're just going to bring it right over there to a fellow birch tree. Um, and plug it, and we're going to see if the chaga takes to the tree. And we'll know where it is because it's right next to the horn. Chaga mycelium right there in the cavity that we carved into the tree. And I just took this 18 gauge wire and uh, very lightly secured it in place. We're going to see what happens. This is kind of um, intentionally sloppy because we want to figure out just how aggressive chaga is. Uh, we'll do some that are a lot more correct. But uh, it's important to come back and make sure you get this wire. We're going to do that at least within a month or two, because uh, otherwise the, the tree will grow and it will damage the tree. So mark it on the GPS.